we're about ready for the next session. Um, I think the next session is titled Tracing Packets in the Kernel OBS Data Pad with Redis. Uh, the speakers for this session are Adrian Moreno and Paolo Valerio, both from Red Hat. Um, so if the presentation is ready, enjoy. Hello, my name is Adrian Moreno, and together with my colleague Paolo Valerio, we are going to talk about tracing packets in the kernel OBS data path with Redis. When we use the kernel data path, the resulting data path gets really complicated. The complexity of tracing packets in this uh, resulting data path has at least three dimensions. On the one hand, there are many places to look into. Um, apart from OBS, kernel uh, module, we have the kernel stack, uh, netdef, tc, ip. We have modules like netfilter. Uh, we have packets going through multiple namespaces, uh, bonding interfaces, tunneling, et cetera. And even in OVS, uh, sometimes the packets go as, are sent to a user space uh, as part of the upcall. Um, but also um, on each of those places, there are many different packets and we need uh, filtering to narrow down the packets that we see in order to actually um, be able to analyze um, some uh, uh, the problem that we want to solve. And uh, even to make things even harder, packets mutate. They, modif they get modified, they get cloned. So we need some tracking in order to do this, um, uh, this tracing and this analysis um, efficient. Now, um, with this context, um, we have developed Retis. Uh, Redis is a network visibility and tracing tool that provides uh, contextual information from several areas of the kernel. And it supports OVS kernel data path from day one, including app call tracking, which is um, what we're going to be talking about today. What is Redis? How to uh, understand it? Well, let's look at an example. Um, this is a command and its output. The first thing about Redis is that it's composed of collectors. Collectors are uh, uh, elements that extract information from probes. They extract information from the kernel, so from several um, structures of the kernel. For example, we have uh, the SKB collector. The SKB collector extracts information from the SKBuff and it prints it in a nice format, which is kind of similar to TCP dumps. We also have the OVS collector in this example, which collected information from OpenB switch kernel module, uh, which is shown there in green. Now, apart from collectors, we have probes. Probes tell Redis where to look for packets. Some of the probes are explicit. Like in this example, we asked Redis to uh, probe a specific trace point in the kernel, and so we did. <laughs> Uh, but also uh, some of, pro of the probes might be automatically uh, configured by, by some collectors. In this example, OVS automatically created a probe in the OpenV switch kernel module. And this is basically because it doesn't really make sense to look for OVS information elsewhere. So we have a bunch of collectors and we're going to go through them uh, just briefly. The SKB collector collects information from the, from the SK buff and essentially network header information. Um, and it doesn't add any automatic probe. The OVS collector is slightly more complex and we're gonna be um, uh, going through uh, it a little bit in detail. It supports the kernel module, it supports app call and uh, action execution uh, trace points, but it also uh, enables us to track packets through user space using USDT probes. Now let's see how that is done. Let's take this diagram. In this diagram, we have the um, open vSwitch kernel module at the bottom and the OVS vSwitch D daemon at the top. When a packet comes, and let's for one moment imagine that we have some tracing ID associated with this packet. We have some uh, tracking information. 
um, when this packet arrives, the challenge here is to uh, carry on this tracing information throughout the app call. How Redis does that? Um, uh, the first time we receive the packet, uh, we we generate a trace point uh, event in the OVS DP app call. After that, um, the packet might get fragmented, and we might have several Q user space packet um, uh, K probes, essentially several calls to this Q user space packet function. So we track that. Um, then we uh, th then the the packet is sent to uh, user space to user space through a netlink socket. What we do here is we hash the first n bytes of the packet, and we store that in some eVPF map, uh, which, uh, and we compare that, that information with the hash that we uh, obtain in the receive up call using the USDT probe, essentially correlating both events. After that, and based on some internal knowledge of how um, yeah, app causal batching works and, uh, and how the handler thread behaves. We are able to correlate that information. Uh, we're, we're able to correlate the receive app call event with events such as the flow execution event and the flow put event that are associated with that same app call, meaning that same packet. Um, these um, these actions, these uh, commands, are then enqueued back into uh, the Netlink socket and sent to the kernel. We use the same mechanism as for uh, the uh, enqueue, uh, as to as the same mechanism that we used to send packets to user space, essentially hashing the packet and calculating this um, this hash at both ends to correlate the event that we generated in the USDT probe and the event that we get when we when the packet goes through the OVS execute actions function. This, this function is called once for each packet. And after that, the packet goes through several runs of the OVS do action execute trace point, because that trace point is called for each action for each individual action in the flow. So using this mechanism, which uh, these three mechanisms, um, we are able to correlate uh, and correlate the, uh, the packet, correlate the tracking information, and uh, effectively do some up call tracing in uh, user space. This is the summary of the me methods that we've uh, discussed and just to mention that of course they are very far from uh, optimal they make some assumptions which might not hold true on certain circumstances or they might not hold true in the future so um, there is room for improvement here to maybe um, think of some uh, infrastructure that OVS can uh, can have built in that makes this tracking of um, up calls um, a bit easier. Um, having uh, having given a, 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 an overview of OVS module, OVS collector, let's continue. There, there are more collectors. The SKB tracking collector. We've already mentioned it a little bit. It it gives you um, the tracking capability across the kernel. It tracks the SKB, SK buff and it detects uh, packet notifications. It's essential uh, to Redis. Um, we have the SKB drop that allows us to um, inspect uh, packet drops and uh, drop reasons. The NFT module, which allows us to um, get NFT table and chain information and even filter on NFT verdicts. The connection tracking module, which extracts connection tracking entry uh, information for uh, an SKB wherever we might find one. And then we have some other features such as profiles. Profile is a feature that we added 
because we ended up having very long command lines like this one, which require kernel knowledge and are just tedious to write. So um, these kind of commands can be collapsed into essentially a YAML file. Uh, you can write a YAML file, share it, combine it with other YAML files, and uh, <clears throat> this will make Redis uh, do have the same behavior with a very um, a much shorter um, command line. And now we have we get to the most exciting uh, capability, which is pickup filtering. Redis supports natively pickup filtering. You can write any expression you want uh, using well-known libpkup um, format, and Redis will compile that expression into cbpf, then ebpf, and um, insert it into the ebpf programs that we load. It is combined with um, SKB tracking. So even though um, a specific event uh, on a specific probe, a packet might not satisfy the filter. If it did satisfy it before, where when it satisfied it, we start tracking it. So we generate events um, of that same packet, even when it no longer satisfies the filter, essentially. And um, finally, um, event process, post processing. Um, as I've mentioned, uh, Redis just collects events and it stores them in a JSON format. <clears throat> so post processing is um, fairly simple. And throughout the demo, <clears throat> we will be seeing a specific post processing um, command called short, <clears throat> which shorts the events based on the packet. So it prints the first event of a specific packet at the top, and then slightly indented, it shows all the other events, all the subsequent events from the same packet. So it shows you the path that a packet took inside the kernel. And now, at last, we've, we've reached the demo time. So Paolo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Adrian. Hello, I'm Paolo Valerio, and today I'm going to run the demo we prepared using OpenShift. Let's see how Redis can be useful to better verify what happens when the packets traverse the data path. In this simple setup, we have two pods, and we are going to simply perform a ping using the pod IP while capturing the events and trace the packets on the node. On the left, we have the node, while on the right, there is the pod that will perform the ping. Let's launch Redis. In this case, we are using a script that runs the tool in a container. You can find the script in the source tree under the directory tools. The command enables some of its modules, OVS included, filtering the events for just ICMP echo requests and the IP address of the pod that performs the ping, storing then the collected data in a file. Okay, now 13 probes have been loaded by the modules. Just try to ping the pod. And stop the tool by pressing Control C. Now it's possible to post process the data. This allows to sort and group the events per packet. The subcommand for this is sort. Let's run sort against the collected data. As you can see, Multiple blocks are presented, and every block contains the sequence of the events for a specific packet. Every event contains information like the timestamp of the event, some information about the current process, the probe type, in this case it's a trace point, the probe name, some tracking information like the tracking ID and the SKB address, some information related to the packet, packet both metadata and packet informations, and the OVS-related informations. In this case, the packet goes through an app call due to a miss, and after hitting a couple of k probes instrumented by the tool, 
it reaches user space. U, in this case, identifies a USDT, in particular this one. Then we switch the performance processing and operates and performs a flow put and an execute. Then we can see the sequence of actions. In this case, we can see the execution of the CT action and then the recirculation action. And after the recirculation, another miss happens and another up call gets performed. The packet reaches user space, another flow gets put and another execute gets performed and so forth down to the last action, which is output port 16, which is basically the, out the port of the destination pod. It's worth to say that if available, like in this case, where the datapad only processes the packet, the recirculation ID related to a specific action gets presented. Let's now quickly see a case where a packet gets dropped for no apparent reason. In this example, we will also enable the generic contract module. On this system, the TCP lose option got disabled, so already established connections are not picked up by the connection tracker. In this example, we will connect to an echo server running on a pod that sends back the bytes received providing a label for convenience. Furthermore, we will connect to the pod using its service IP, so in this case, the packet will go through the NAT. Let's start create this with all the modules enabled this time and then connect to the server. Let's send a message to the server. We see the reply and let's send another message. OK, no reply gets received, so we can stop collecting events and start post-processing to understand what's going on. As usual, the event sequence gets presented and, for example, as for the sync packet, two things in particular stands out here. The first is the presence of contract information here, like the connection state, the protocol state, origin and reply, L3 and L4 informations, and zone number. Another thing that stands out is that, as we said, the packets go through DNAT, as we can see from the action here. But still the tool keep collecting the events for the packet after it gets manipulated. So let's now jump down to the end of the dump where we expect to find more information about the problem. Okay. As the first thing that stands out here is the complete lack of contract information. So something must have happened during the lookup and the second thing that we can notice is that the packet get dropped. So the hypothesis here is that the packet went through the lookup and the lookup failed, the packet got marked as invalid and the packet got dropped. So let's try to monitor the destroy event to see if something happens to the, end, the contract entry and try to reproduce. So let's connect to the server, let's send a message, okay. Here's the reply, and we see that the entry gets deleted and the user space that requested this deletion was vSwitched in. Let's try to monitor and see if an up cuddle gets issued on the system. So let's monitor the exec on the system, of course, grabbing by contract. We are lucky because we see that an up cuddle gets executed. And this is the process ID that executed the app card. So let's see the common line for this pro for this PID. Okay, something tells us that this script doesn't behave correctly. So let's try to kill it and see if this solves our problem. Okay, let's send a message. Okay, reply, let's send another message. This time we receive another reply. Okay, it seems that the problem got solved and we do not observe drops anymore.
With this last demo, we'll see how it can be also possible to use Redis to exclude OBS when there is an unexpected flaw. In this case, we are going to perform some simple HTTP requests to a service IP of a deployment with two replicas running on two different nodes. In this particular setup, the HTTP requests can be encapsulated in the Energy tunnel and leave the node or remain on the same node depending on which pod we are reaching. So let's start Redis enabling SKB drop module requesting the step trace as well. And let's perform the HTTP request. Okay, the first one gets dropped while the second succeeds. Let's see the first one. Okay, we notice that the data path, the OBS data path, process the packet and the packet goes through NFT and this is the SKB drop reason. Okay, let's now enable the NFT module to see in the specific what is going on. Okay, let's perform again the HTTP request. Okay, so now we see the failing HTTP request and we see that it hits a rule that drops the packet. The table is named bug with handle 10, the chain egress with the handle one, and of course the handle of the rule. Let's now try to list this table. Okay, now the dump confirms that the rule that drops has handle two, and in fact, it drops the packet. Now let's try to delete the table and see if this fixed the problem. Okay, let's perform the HTTP request again. Okay, and now it works. It works again and it keeps working. Okay, everything seems to be fixed. Okay, it, it can be possible to uh, not filter and receive all the events of the packet while traversing the NFT chain. All you need to do is to use all instead of drop while filtering for verdicts. And as you can see, you will receive all the events of the packet traversing the NFT rule set. In this demo, we tried to show how Redis can be useful as a standalone tool, but also in conjunction with other tools like we did in the second setup, where we also used the DNet filter contract tools and XXDoop shipped with PCC to solve our issues. Hope you enjoyed. And with that, we've reached the end of our demo. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Um, I hope you have all enjoyed this demo. Uh, you uh, feel as excited as I um, um, about this tool and how it can be used to troubleshoot and observe OVS kernel data path, including its interactions with other kernel components such as connection tracking and um, and the filter, for example. So we're wrapping up the presentation now. Um, we have one more slide showing some of the future plans. There are lots of features that we would like to implement, um, but these are just some of the ideas. Um, note that before the end of the year, we would like to um, release a new version that will include two uh, very exciting features, uh, PCAP NG support. This will allow users to uh, generate a PCAP file um, with the packets that go through any of the points that Redis can hook into so that further analysis can be done in, in tools like Wireshark. <clears throat> uh, BTF-based metadata filtering, that's another feature that will be uh, released soon, and that will allow users to generate more complex filters based uh, that match not only on packet headers, but um, that match on um, SK buff fields, like fields on the SK buff structure. So it requires some more um, kernel knowledge, but it uh, enables um, very wide variety of use cases and complex filtering. So with this, um, we've come to the end of the presentation. Um, Redis is, um, of course, an open source project, and we would love some uh, collaboration, feedback, uh, requests, or testing, or um, ideas from, from everyone, and especially from the OBS community. 
uh, on how to improve um, its, its interaction with OVS and maybe OVN, etc. So that's the GitHub repo, uh, that's the IRC channel, and um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thank you very much for your uh, time. All right. Thanks. Uh, thank you guys for this uh, nice presentation. It looked like we have quite some questions. So I guess if you guys are online, I'm sure I see at least Paulo online and I assume Adrian will be online too. Um, but for now, I think the first question is, um, uh, is there a specific minimum kernel version that this tool needs to run? Um, yeah, there are some constraints and most they are uh, due to a specific feature we uh, we need uh, to have complete support of that of a specific kernel. But uh, roughly, yeah, we didn't test it. Um, we plan to do it. Uh, yeah, but roughly the version should be five twelve, some more. Um, uh, but in in general, we regularly test with. Uh, uh, I don't know, as close as upstream, many Fedora version, Ubuntu Gemini, and uh, yeah, we have support for Relate 4, but that is, uh, there is a specific container image uh, for that. Uh, so it's not the actual main branch that supports that, but so yeah, there are some constraints. Let's say 512 or more. All right, thanks. All good answers to the question. Um, we have another question from Elia, who asks, um, can we replace the port numbers with names in the output for easy analysis? Yeah, that, that's one of the ideas we have to improve the report of some of the information related to the OVS uh, module. And uh, yeah, uh, at the moment it's not possible. Um, we are planning to, 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 to to ease it to, and to improve the report. And so most probably our report names will be part of it. All right, thanks. Um, I have another question from Alash um, with the question, if we can create individual open flow rules similar to what OF Proto Trace does? Uh, no, not at the moment. Um, again, this, is, this could be part of future plans. And uh, yeah, feedback is very welcome and uh this is a nice idea and yeah we, we talked about things related to this uh but at the moment at the moment it's not possible we will see what can be done all right cool um i have two other questions um or three other questions actually there's more coming in but the other question is from dumitru to see if we can have OVN support for a specific pack packets being punched to the controller um i guess that's also an enhancement yeah, at the moment we focused on the kernel data path, so uh, higher level, let's say, uh, components are not part of the, uh, of the integration. Uh, again, great feedback. We can, we will brainstorm on this. All right, cool. And then uh, I think an, another important question, I guess, for others as well to understand: um, Is there any performance impact, you know, on the kernel or on the OBS collectors? by installing all these probes did you do any measurement for example uh we did not measure uh so we do not have numbers uh of course there is an impact the impact uh sometimes it, depending on the module can be you know uh, more uh th there might be more impact but usually you know it, it's we are optimizing everything uh and as far as we seen uh you know the performance on ocp were fairly good we're, but yes some numbers uh are definitely part of future uh, data collection okay and then i see uh, one final question at least in the uh, in the q a section q a section um and that is if you have considered also probing the user space data pad for obs slash gpdk um and its contract uh Yes, we considered uh, the idea. It's a little bit, there are some technical uh, things to overcome. Uh, for example, in the kernel, you have support of K probes, so you can probe basically everywhere. 
uh, you probes are available. So to and of course, filtering is uh, you know uh, data structure agnostic, so it doesn't depend on SKBuff. So technically, filters filter is something, and the same goes for uh, metadata filtering. Um, but there are some technical difficulties, and uh, probably many, many, many a good number of USDT must be introduced to make it to make you know uh, some things stable to uh, you know to avoid uh, uh, compiler from inlining functions uh, because of optimization and stuff like that. And there are other technical things to solve. We we consider this. And uh, yeah, we will spend time on it for sure. Okay, nice. Thanks. Yeah, uh, I've seen in the past that there that adding USDT probes in the user space data path, especially for DPDK, it actually adds some latency and some delay, um, even without them being enabled. So yeah, that's definitely something to uh, to remember. Yep. Okay, if let me check if there's no new questions. One second. Um, no, I think we're good. So, so thank you very much, Paolo. Uh, which is, uh, which kernel version are you testing with? Um, is it 6x or? Uh, basically, raw hide, so as close as upstream uh, uh, as possible. And uh, yeah, uh, also uh, basically all. All center stream, <laughs> basically nine and eight. Uh, some Fedora and uh, yeah, and Ubuntu Java, which should be, uh, I don't know the exact version, probably got updated, but it should be fairly old. All right, thank you for answering it also. And then thank you very much, Paolo and uh, Adrian, who's currently not here for the presentation and getting these two ready. Um, I think um, people should just try it out. It's really nice. So um, I had experience using it in uh, some of the troubleshooting uh, a customer environment, and it was really useful not having to uh, fall back to doing all the probes yourself. So.